Hi, welcome to Vitamin Junkies. I'm Jennifer Lyle. I'm Dr. JJ. And we're addicted to good health. Today, we're going to be talking about what probiotics are. Because that's a good question. There are lots of different forms of probiotics. And JJ is going to take one of them right now. Da -da -da, probiotics. Um, probiotics are great. We'll start off by saying that. Uh, so what probiotics are is that they are live bacteria or probiotic yeast that impart a um, health benefit to the host. So um, this is a blend of probiotics. So in this I have uh, a lactobacillus species, a bifidobacterium species, and uh, yeah, well, there we go, on the hatch. Awesome. Ah. Now it can be, come in a capsule form format mm -hmm. and also it comes in liquid, right? Mm. There's one brand I've seen that liquid I yogurt. take it. Yogurts, it's a form, yes. Mm. Liquid this yogurts, I guess, yeah, some you could get in, uh, in liquids, but it's not that common. I'll usually see them in capsules or super yogurts, very concentrated yogurts. Um, some of them are chewable tablets, but for the most part, it's capsules, sometimes tablets. Yeah. Very good. Mm hmm. Probiotics. So, they're good bacteria. And they're good they bacteria. Um, so, they do a number of things. Um, anything that says lactobacillus will secrete lactic acid. Uh, and when it secretes lactic acid, it's able to kill off pathogenic microorganisms. So uh, in women in their vagina, for women that are prone to yeast infection, um, in your digestive tract, um, a lot of them will secrete hydrogen peroxide. Um, a lot of the probiotics will also secrete things called bactericins. So these are um, like the equivalent of antibiotics. So you have a bacteria secreting an antibiotic to kill a quote unquote bad guy, one of those bad, bad bacteria out there. Um, they help with your immune system, they decrease allergies, they decrease your risk of colon cancer, they improve your nutrient absorption, you're able to get more nutrients out of your food, they prevent infection, they prevent traveler's diarrhea. Uh, God, there's so many good treatments for, for probiotics, it's, it's quite, quite impressive. They also help with ulcerative colitis and Crohn's, so these are inflammatory bowel conditions which are very serious for those of you out there who have that. And is it true that if you take an antibiotic that you should then, a short while afterwards, take a probiotic? That's true. Yep, yep. So most patients who are taking an antibiotic, I'll usually have them wait six hours and then they can take a probiotic. Uh, but once you're done your course of antibiotic, you should always go through the full course that your doctor prescribes. Then you should definitely take a higher dose of probiotic uh, because an antibiotic will kill everything. It kills the good guys and the bad guys. So you want to replenish with the good guys, which awesome. is a probiotic. Very good. Mm -hmm. How do you pick a good one? Because there are different um, concentrations of it yes. and yeah. different um, Okay, so some tips for picking a good one. I always recommend people take a blend of probiotics. So you want to look for lactobacillus. You want to look for um, bifidobacterium. Um, in some cases, you may want to take the probiotic yeast Saccharomyces. But really, in this case, you should really have someone refer you before you take that one. Um, and uh, usually, you, you want to blend because depending on the nature of the probiotic, some probiotics have an affinity for the stomach, some have an affinity for the uh, smaller intestine, so the up, so the basically the upper small GI. Some have an affinity for the colon. So you kind of want a broad range of probiotics that'll hit the whole aspect of the digestive tract. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Now. Is it possible to be deficient in probiotics? or um, It's not necessarily being deficient, it'd be more that you'd have symptoms. So for example, chronic yeast infection in women, diarrhea, irritable bowel, uh, digestive issues, allergies. In those cases, you're usually deficient in probiotics. So it's just the balance and it's the, balance. the flora. It's basically out of balance of your flora. Right. So it's a, yeah, it's, a, it's a floral imbalance. Now, there mm -hmm. are some foods that probiotics occur in naturally, is that mm -hmm. right? Um, sauerkraut, yogurt we talked about, so fermented foods. Um, so there are, there are sources of probiotics. These are good for just daily maintenance, but if you've taken an antibiotic or you have allergies or diarrhea and so on, you're not going to get enough from these foods to really help treat it. You really need a capsule or one of those super yogurts to help. Um, also, too, when back to your question, you're asking about how do you choose a good probiotic. Ideally, you want a human strain. Um, you want a strain that's been cultivated in humans, um, whereas some of the probiotic strains are bovine, so they're cow-based. So if you are sensitive to dairy, then you, know, you wouldn't want a probiotic that's been cultivated from cows or some are cultivated from sheep. So I, I, I point to people towards human strains. What, what does that mean, cultivated? It means it's human. grown. All bacteria, if you're taking a probiotic, it's grown. So human strain would, would mean it's, been, it's a healthy strain sampled from a human and they've just grown it. They grow colonies of it. So I could take some of your good bacteria and then 
correct. Dr. JJ's good bacteria. <laughs> Just put them on a spoon. And let it multiply. Wait two weeks. Take in a capsule for her. <laughs> You'd have big hair. Big curly hair. <laughs> That'd be disturbing. It Ooh, would be. Moving along. Maybe we shouldn't yes. have gone down that road. Yes. Yeah, let's, let's avoid that, yes. <laughs> In any case, so it sounds like you should check in with a, a healthcare practitioner just to find out if it's mm -hmm. something that you should be adding, or should every does it would everyone benefit? Most people from? should be taking it. It's it's very well tolerated. Very rare side effects with probiotics. Whenever there's been a bad effect with probiotics, it's been with usually people that have had indwelling catheters or or surgical procedures where an infection got in when there really shouldn't have been an, an entry into the body. Um, but for the most part, it's very well tolerated. When you start one at the beginning. It's common to get a little bit of gas and a little bit of bloating because your body's balance is being readjusted. Mm -hmm. So the good guys are killing the bad guys. That's usually how I explain it to patients. And then usually about a week or so it rebalances and you're, and you're good to go. And you should notice a change. It helps with constipation. Your bowel should be a lot firmer and you'll, you'll definitely feel a big difference. Now even babies can take probiotics too, right? Because oh, yeah. diaper rashes, yeah. that's a sign mm -hmm. of the, mm -hmm. the thrush or... Yeah. Candida. Yeah, yeah. Pregnant women could take it and then they could give it to their kids. Actually, when pregnant women take it and then the kids take it from birth onwards, it tends to prevent the risk of getting eczema. So, some great really? studies there. Yeah. yeah. Now, when my brother had um, stem cell transplant, mm -hmm. one of the things afterwards, like I wanted him to get better quickly, um, but he said that he couldn't take probiotics. After a stem cell? Yeah. Possibly or because, well, probably in his case because his immune system was so weakened by basically the the because the, they eradicated before they did the stem stem cell transplant mm -hmm. so introducing any bacteria that may have even if it's a good one may have thrown off the balance and could have given him an oh. infection because if he had a stem cell transplant they would have eradicated his entire bone marrow where he was going right wow. so he probably would have a weakened immune system that's why so, so again really important to check in with a healthcare practitioner to make sure mm -hmm. it's the right thing for you to do definitely like in cases of you know this is serious condition right Awesome. Yeah, then you get leukemia, I assume, right? Or uh, lymphoma? Or whatever. Uh, it's a different form. It's one of the cancer, rare, rare form yeah. of cancer. Yeah, yeah. So, serious conditions. Cancer, always see a healthcare professional. Awesome. Mm -hmm. And if you want to find a practitioner in your community, you should go to the Find a Practitioner link on our website, vitaminjunkies.com. And right above it, you will see Join the Addiction. And that's where you can subscribe to our video podcast. And you'll receive a notification of every time we release a new episode. And while you're there, please complete our survey. We want to know what topics you want us to cover on our shows. So go to vitaminjunkies.com. And when you complete the survey, you could win a chance to get a $100 gift bag from Hey Jute. Awesome. Thank you so much for the information, Dr. JJ. Mm. And thank you for joining us today. I'm Jennifer Lyle. I'm Dr. JJ. And let's continue the addiction to good health. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do.